Good evening. Welcome to another exciting program of the Queen's Grapevine. This is your host, Wallenford Lee. Tonight on the Queen's Grapevine, we want to talk a little bit about the recent re-election of President Obama, his second term and the implication that that had. As each and every one of you here in America know that it was a long-winded, uh, drawn-out process for him to be re-elected, and a big campaign that he had against Romney. We want to talk a little bit about the campaign. We want to talk a little bit about some of the promises that Obama made in 2008 and the difficulties that he had in his first term. More importantly, what can we expect for him, from him and his administration in the second term? We're more than pleased to have our special guest with us, an activist in the area and a community leader. I'm talking about brother Akeem Matlak, who happened to be also a professional photographer. We've had the pleasure to work with him in the past, and we just felt that as a guy that's been extremely involved in the community, we want to have a little bit more, uh, instead of having a politician on our, on our program, but someone who is really truly involved in the community and has a say and has a feel on a nerve of things that are taking place right here in the tri-state area in New York City in the community. But I might like to welcome to our program. Well, I, I thank you so very much for giving me such a, you know, a, a flowery introduction. All of those things I hope I can live up to in some way. Well, I think but you deserve it. I, I, think I, think I really appreciate you. I You've appreciate worked you. very difficultly in the community for many years, and we are very cognizant and aware of the, the work that you've done. And, and we know for a fact uh, the things that you've done, because when we did that uh, program with the photographers in Harlem, it was very well received. And our audience wrote many times asking for you to be in the program wow. because of the way how you express yourself. Okay, okay. Well, greatly appreciate it. You know, in terms of being able to deal with almost any subject, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little versed in various things. So it's, it's good and, you know, appreciative that you, you seek to deal with it from a different level. And I just relate to those in the position, the politicians, to address some of the concerns that might themselves present conflicts of interest uh, in terms of what they're doing. Um, politics is a very interesting, uh, some people say game, but it's, it's no game, as we well know. And so to, uh, to get almost anything done in any community, you have to be able to interact with various other levels of, uh, of control. You just uh, say uh, members of state, government, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. That's that's about controlling things, which is what we're talking about here now. The highest level, the president himself, in the highest level of control uh, for the second time, uh, unforeseen by many, even in its first in its first presentation. Now we're here for the second time, and uh, most recently, the second largest um, outpouring of individuals in a, in a cold uh, weather climate, but much better than what it was the last time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, folks are enthused about this overall. Uh, many folks who have fought long and hard years to see uh, anybody who would respond seemingly to their concerns are finally getting some light of day. Um, it's difficult though, because uh, in particular, the president it has, has, a, has, a, has a, a very interesting past, as we well know. And so most folks know that he has his white mother and he has his black father, uh, bringing him in a space where initially it presented great difficulties for many other people to understand how could this young senator from Chicago be rising so fast, not have put himself into various uh, uh, activities, and, and, and folks then questioned his blackness. And a lot of them think that he came out of nowhere. Right, 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 but he, he's been working uh, long and hard, as we know, he's been toiling soil on a community level, uh, which he didn't have to. Uh, 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 editor of Harvard Review, etc., Law Review, uh, first. Um, he's involved in many firsts. Obviously, he's very focused on what he's doing, able to develop a great team at times, uh, understands the pulse of what's going on, um, a man in his time, uh, seemingly at most times ready for the job, but uh, uh, most people want a king. <laughs> they don't want a president. They want him to get in there and start slashing at various things, uh, putting things into position the way, the way they would like him to put it in position. And if he doesn't, uh, if he doesn't do it that way, then he's, then he's, he's failed. And then he's, he's failed. failed. Um, totally misunderstanding government. Totally misunderstanding how people have to interact with each other to get things done. And it's ironic that you would mention something like that because well, in his first term, I remember Giuliani saying that he did nothing. All he was was just a community leader. I am taken, taken back by that because I'm shocked that someone would think that this great nation, an intelligent nation like this, 
would elect a person who is just strictly community leader who have done, to use the Giuliani words, nothing. Well, he has done nothing. And I know his first term was somewhat very, very difficult because of the lack of cooperation of the Congress, the senators, and anything that he, that he presented was basically stampeded down. Hello, Chicago. If there is anyone out there who still doubts that America is a place where all things are possible, who still wonders if the dream of our founders is alive in our time, who still questions the power of our democracy, tonight is your answer. How do you how do you compare his first term versus the second term and his expectation? Well, I wouldn't attempt to compare yet because we don't have anything to compare to, but the deal there would be we could project into some, some possibility of what, what can happen. Politics is the art of the possible. Um, and so if you have people that are willing to work with you, um, however you get them to work with you, I think uh, it, it'll, be, it, it, it'll present itself in a totally different way. He should have gained, gone at a certain level of respect from various individuals who still seem to don't understand his position, the position of the American people. And of course, they have to present their own way. This is a big Super Bowl going on right now. It's already happened, mm -hmm. but it's still going on. We have another series of quarters to go through with these individuals. Back to first quarter, uh, establishing a position, getting ready for halftime, hopefully, and to finish the game out on a totally different level. Um, some people are looking at now, and some people are already looking at eight years away from now, ten years away from now, and how to institute and finagle into positions where uh, you just lost one. You've got many more to go. And this is, I think, the more important perspective on it, in that President Obama is the President of America he has to answer to various concerns at the same time. And it's important that you use the word America. It's not just the black community, like right. some try to put it. Right, right. He's the American president, president of the United States of America. I have always believed that hope is that stubborn thing inside us that insists, despite all the evidence to the contrary, that something better awaits us, so long as we have the courage to keep reaching, to keep working, to keep fighting. America, I believe we can build on the progress we've made and continue to fight for new jobs and new opportunity and new security for the middle class. I believe we can keep the promise of our founding, the idea that if you're willing to work hard, it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from or what you look like or where you love. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white or Hispanic or Asian or Native American, or young, or old, or rich, or poor, able, disabled, gay, or straight. You can make it here in America if you're willing to try. And we're back here in the Queen's Grapevine talking about the, the second election of uh, President Obama. As those of you who might be aware watching this program know that he uh, just had his first term finished and was just reelected, I think, the 20th. Uh, sworn in for his second term. Uh, Obama has a lot of things uh, facing him. He has uh, the immigration issues, uh, the border control, uh, the other immigration issues of promises that he made to the Latino community that, that's coming up, and he started making a move, and we're going to continue talking to Brother Kim about that. He has the economic situation that he has to find a way to turn around because the unemployment is very large in this country, and it's a problem. A lot of jobs have been going overseas, and again, that affects America because there's a lot of unemployment, and it's, it's very high. He has promised in 2016 uh, a huge manufacturing job right here in the United States of America. We hope it will come to be. He has the other challenges, which is facing the NRA because of the gun violence situation. What took place recently in, in, in Connecticut, uh, in Newton, where we lost 27 lives, a lot of young, innocent children. This is a pattern that we have seen in Colorado. 
who have seen it in Arizona where one of our, our senators or congressperson was shot in the head and a child was killed. We have seen the amount of crime that has taken place in, in violent cities such as Chicago, Philadelphia, and even a little bit right here in the tri-state area and some of it in the Bronx. But again, these are things I'm facing him and we won't even get into what's going on overseas because we're not enough time for that. You started talking a little bit about all the violence that, that has been taking place and, and things that he has to face. He went uh, recently to Newton, uh, Newton, Connecticut, to where, where this horrible, horrible crime took place with a, a young kid who was, seemed like he was a little bit disturbed. Uh, his <laughs> mother made guns available to him and, and training. And for no apparent reason uh, to know, he, he just uh, took lives in a very quiet area of suburbs of Connecticut. Um, people always tend to think that a lot of crime only happened uh, in, in, in the five boroughs or, 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 or in this area. Uh, this got a lot of attention because obviously it's the suburbs. And, and again, young, innocent life. And what are some of the challenges that he's going to have with the new laws and that he's trying to put in to having uh, assault rifles sold to anyone or guns? The problem is really not assault rifles for the black community. The problem is handguns. Uh, assault rifles exist in the outside area more times. Mm. Um, so the attack on assault, and it's not even an attack on assault rifles. To put it that way, it, 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 it diffuses it for me. The effort to control gun violence, not to say should be focused on gun violence, period. As guns don't kill people, as I say. If that was the case, how come so many people leave the gun shows and nobody dies at the gun shows? You have to have some mind behind that weapon. Most of the people who are seemingly, I can't speak for them, I don't know them too well, um, neither am I in their shoes, but many people speak to the gun issue in terms of being able to protect country. Uh, or at least, their, at least their particular plot of land against state involvement in terms mm. of taking it over whatsoever. That seems to be the usual push uh, or the right to be able to defend yourself at some point. I think that was initially put forth in regards to militias mm -hmm. and the, 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 the usage of, of the militia to defend the, 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 the people against the, the tyranny of the state, of the government. Uh, of course, some of these things just seem so cr crazy. Anybody who thinks that they're going to be able to defend themselves, quote unquote, against the government by getting an assault rifle and packing up on bullets, um, even looking to do it together, a little deluded. Um, <laughs> it's not funny, but that already tells me something is a little, kind of a little off there. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, everybody sees the life different. Everybody sees the world differently. Um, and uh, most of uh, that particular crew, the Tea Party, it's the conservatives, et cetera, et cetera, uh, know that they're in a position of retreat and that the world no longer accepts them and deals with them the way they would like to be dealt with from a white supremacist level. Mm -hmm. The world is, is shifting up and their world is, is seeking to balance itself in terms of exactly what's going on here. Um, still, as you say, when they sneeze, the disease or, or whatever it is, the virus is way more intense in our communities. And so in the ability, they have a much better ability seemingly to protect themselves against some of the, the, the drama that's going on in society, but everybody is paying a price. When it begins to infringe into their areas of understanding, uh, brought on with, whether it be by a storm mm -hmm. or by some other level of tragedy, uh, folks pay attention, eyes open. Things are going on here. We need to get with it. Deal Something with it. has to be done. It's been going on and continues to go on in the black community. Uh, jobs would help, though it, it, it would be an immediate help. An infusion, so-called, that infusion of finances into any community would, would, would be of a great help. But still there's the dynamic of similarly folks applying uh, not only for whatsoever it is, but applying themselves to overall. the overall to being able to, to, to deal with the challenges of applying yourself to, to get some of these things done. Uh, witnessed by the folks who I, I think, <laughs> who, who saw their houses swept away, wow. uh, uh, who, lives swept away, and belongings. then uh, belongings, entire 
areas being swept away in, in, in a way that you never could believe this could ever happen. Uh, it's like, of course, the great earthquake or something stuff opened up the great wave and cleaned up some things and, you know, shifted some things around. The, the universe, of course, is much larger than any of these concerns of man. And so although we would like the president to be able to swoop in and clean things up and deal with things, tidy them up and tie the knots and it's okay, uh, there are wars going on. There are uh, new areas being affected, Mali in particular, uh, an area that's suffering now from a destabilization that of course evolves from the destabilization of Libya and the fleeing of various uh, Al-Qaedaites, et cetera, into these vast desert areas where you can fly over <laughs> the Sahara north to south for almost six hours. Never been east to west, that would probably be like 12, 13 hours. These are areas where you look down on it and you say, are, are people there? Mm -hmm. There are people right there. They try. You see tracks in the, in the sand, in sand, but you don't see where it goes. It ends, it ends into nowhere, and people are living there. That is their life. Are you, are you thinking that all of these things that are taking place is, uh, worldwide is, is uh, a change of philosophy or a change of times? Uh, because when we start talking a little bit about the gun violence and stuff like that, you talk about militias, and I understand that. But most of the violence with guns that are taking place are with youngsters going in and doing this thing. Could television and movies play a big part of these things that are taking oh boy. place? I mean, we are asking the president to solve these things, uh -huh. to confront all of these things mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. arms. <laughs> but we're talking about youngsters, 17 and 18 yeah, years yeah. old, doing this thing, killing innocent people in the movies. Okay, so the effects, in, in, the effects of visuals, consistent violence on people's ability then to act out. I want to say, I almost want to say, I know it's true. I know that, you know, I haven't dealt with the psychology. I haven't looked at any great psycho psychological studies on the subject. My favorite is when Bruce Lee was in the movies, there was a whole bunch of kicking going on around here. A lot of karate. Folks was doing enough karate chops and double, you name it, they was trying to do it. Obviously, visuals have a deep effect on people. You combine it with music, a uh, gear towards illicit emotion, uh, you put people in controlled environments. Uh, you deal with them with their, their technical difficulties in an intimate way. You can, you can be in your home now. You can never leave your home, have a home theater, like, you know, an intense system and the big screen, and you're happy. Mm -hmm. you, you pass the popcorn, baby. Right. Have, you know, access to have access to everything. Uh, let me make an order here, and you can take your smartphone, and you order up some food. And, it can bring it right to you and drop it at your feet if you want it to. Everything is there. It's all, it's all there. And so it's, 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 it's extremely uh, uh, straightforward, I think, in terms of thinking that one does lead to the other in some way. It affects music. People know the effect music has sure. on them. Sure. Uh, people know the effect. If you see, if you see something happen negatively uh, in the beginning of the day, you're not really chipper <laughs> at 12 o'clock. It's on your mind, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course. Some people don't like horror movies. Uh, some people are not geared towards any sort of shooting, et cetera, et cetera. They tend to want to live their life outside of that sphere. Mm -hmm. They don't even want the imprinting. So it's, 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 it's straightforward for me to say that all of these things are playing on people's minds. Uh, some people uh, look to conspiracy theories, et cetera, et cetera. I don't even think that it has to go there now. It, it, it's just a straightforward situation in terms of what we see and the effect. The president has little control over these things. Um, the, the democracy that people fight to defend. He might not have control over these things, as you mentioned. Direct control direct over some control, of these things. But it seems that every time one of these big eruptions take place, mm -hmm. especially the Republican Party, they expect him to solve the, the, of, of course. These, these things. Everybody like expects him to solve their problem. That's part of the presidency. And yet still the first one to say that government should not be, not be involved, involved in, in, certain in, certain, in certain aspects yeah. of the situation. When, when, when we get back on the grapevine, uh, the last uh, six or seven minutes, we're going to continue talking to Brother Akeem about the presidency and, and you know, expectation and responsibilities of Obama. And, you know, we had a nice conversation here talking about gun control and violence. We'll be right back on the grapevine. NBC News has projected that President Obama 
has won the state of Ohio. President Obama has been reelected for a second term. He did it. With this call in Ohio, it is uh, a done deal. President Barack Obama wins a second term uh, as 44th president of the United States. Uh, let the record show that it is 12 minutes past 11 p.m. on the East Coast. Ohio put him over the top. Chris Matthews. He didn't need the South. It's so interesting. He may well win all three of those states, but he didn't need them. This is a very, and I thought, I said this in the beginning of the night, the geography of this election is very powerful. And I've watched some of the ugly stuff in this campaign along the ethnic and racial lines perpetrated by people like Donald Trump and Sununu and the rest of them and around the edges by the candidate himself but Mitt Romney talking about welfare and all the rest of it and and uh, and what's his name uh, the former speaker of the house whose name eludes me right now <laughs> Newt Genry's talking about food stamps and all that I have to call it crapola all that stuff didn't have an effect in the north apparently we'll see if it's had an effect in the south but he's won it without the south with Florida still too close to call with Virginia still too close to call with Colorado still too close to call with Nevada still too early to call and we're back here in the Queens grapevine of course talking about the recent election of uh, President Obama which is something that none of us as minority expected for him to win the first term and now the second term. There are just so many challenges there for him. One, he's got to find a ways and means to balance the budget, which is out of control. He's got to find a ways and means in these coming election to control spending. He's got to find a way and means to create more jobs right here in America, I repeat, right here in America to put youngsters to work and to get the economy going. Another major challenge that he's going to have is replacing Hillary Clinton, who has done a, a wonderful job. And again, we're here talking to a community activist. Uh, Brother Key Motlack has been kind enough to come on our program to talk a little bit um, about all the things that are taking place in what he saw com community-wise versus the challenges that, that Obama has, the gun control, the NRA, and all these type of things. We have approximately five minutes, uh, 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 brother, I think. I want to talk a little bit about Benghazi. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about a little bit about Benghazi because, um, as you know, the United States is a big media center. We lost four lives. We lost four Americans, and that's extremely painful. Um, to their family, to the country, and it's not something that none of us like to see. What I'm not quite um, sure of is how it was presented and who is to blame. We know for a fact that uh, Hillary presented herself um, to Congress recently to present her side of what she thought it was. Uh, it seems like Congress was bent on attacking the Obama administration in terms of when they knew and information that was given to the press. Was it truthful? Was it responsible? And how much a president? Uh, Benghazi is an interesting situation. Um, I think that got away from the, the, the purview, yes, uh, of, of the secretary at the time uh, in terms of the direct focus. But as we well know, Secretary of State, as she says, oh, come on, I'm, I'm getting you know quite a bit of emails, et cetera, every day, et cetera. People vet the stuff. <laughs> Maybe I missed something, but in the midst of it, when you're, when you're out there in the world, the, the ability to respond, what would, what, what would folks have done at the time? And she says, come on, we, we're past that now. Um, let's get on. You said that, but the American let's, public is insisting in saying why took uh, the administration okay. Obama three days some, to respond some, to some, 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 of, some of those folks uh, uh, have their right Absolutely, as you say, folks have died in this particular instance. And maybe, I, I, I tend not to, to try and really, I can try to understand what happened. But when you find out 10 years hence exactly what went on, it's like, wow, you know, uh, nobody really thought any of those things. Um, we know that various things are incited uh, for things to happen, but I, I, uh, how this happened, uh, we'll, we'll, I think it would still take a time for people to really decipher what happened here. Other than, as she real says, truth never came out. the real, the, the truth, I don't think the truth comes out on some of these instances, especially as it relates to the higher level, the attacks on 
the State Department attacks and various things have to be classified and then declassified before folks get access to those, 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 those pieces of information. You're probably right, but, but, but in the media center that we're into right now, we talk a lot about the internet, television, stuff like mm -hmm, that. There's mm -hmm. a lot of pressure on each and every administration today mm -hmm. to come clear and to report things the way it's supposed to be. Absolutely. I would like to think that Ms. Rice, who reported uh, okay. the information, she was reading from what she got from the State Department. In, in regard to Ms. CIA, Rice, I, no, I, I think. In regards to Ms. Rice, okay, let's talk about, I, I see that almost as being a, uh, almost a non-issue, in that all she could do is relay the information that she had. An attack on Ms. Rice totally, totally un unprecedented in some regards, uh, as, if, as if folks were trying to hide something. Uh, information was presented that was there on the table for everybody to see, discussed in a way that was on board, um, never seeming to hide anything. And once the information came forward, folks made the information known. Uh, the idea of some folks then trying to obfuscate the information and hold back things of course, those questions would come up. Uh, it, 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 it skewed the, the playing field for her. And still, as I say, with politics, I don't think that, that, that she would be given up as a sacrificial lamb type of thing in the initial play. But I, I wouldn't write it off, mm. you know, in terms of how folks are really. She was never nominated. She was discussed. Mm -hmm. And so immediately, that allowed folks to attack that situation. And, and erase her from the playing field. Uh, could she have been a sacrificial lamb? I don't know. Uh, could she have been the, the, the opportunity then to give people the six, eight, 10 weeks until people uh, uh, relax away from that issue? But it didn't take long. There are various other issues that pop to the fore. Uh, though uh, uh, Hillary, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Miss Clinton, uh, has seemingly done an exemplary job Yes. It's, it's taken a toll on her, obviously, on her and uh, on her health, exactly. And folks continue now to want to project four years hence uh, as to what she will be doing. These sorts of things are just uh, 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 throw-ins to keep know, things it, it, going. It takes time. Well, Brother Kim, like I said, half an hour is not enough uh, time. To half an hour? Yeah. It's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's up already. It sucks. I want to thank you on behalf of the family of Grapevine to... Uh, sharing your thought process uh, about the Obama administration and all the good things in that uh, come in the report. We want to thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you for having me and being able to discuss some of these issues uh, on, a, on a level that I don't normally do. Uh, you know, it's usually around photography, but you know, I'm gladly able to give a few words in regards to some of these issues. Everybody is concerned Everybody about these opinion. issues and has an opinion. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good. And again, this is Wellington Lee saying good night for the Queen's Bay Pine, uh, saying to you, we'll see you next week at the same time and the same hour, and hope that you'll enjoy this program. We're talking about the, uh, the Obama administration and all the major challenges facing him going forward. Again, this is Wellington Lee saying good night. Tonight, in this election, you, the American people, reminded us that while our road has been hard, while our journey has been long, we have picked ourselves up. We have fought our way back. And we know in our hearts that for the United States of America, the best is yet to come.